Are you someone who wants to put together an external storage drive which is USB-C and also has an NVMe SSD inside of it? But maybe you are someone who has not done this before so you want to do this in the easiest way possible or maybe you're someone who wants to do this cost effectively. Well in this video I'm going to show you such a drive which is both easy to put together and also very cost effective. So the USB-C to NVMe enclosure that I'm going to be using for this particular build is this one here by Sabrent and this is super easy to use. I would also go so far as to say it is quite possibly the easiest of all of them out there to actually build such a drive with. And the NVMe SSD drive that I'm going to be using for this particular build is a Western Digital SN550. This is a one terabyte variant and the reason why I'm using this one is because it is perfectly matched for this particular build and it is also very cost effective. And once completed, this drive will be compatible with most Windows desktops and laptops also Linux computers. It will also be compatible with the vast majority of Android devices and also Chromebooks. However, my particular use is going to be with my M1 Max MacBook Pro here. And I will also be using that for doing the disk speed tests in this video. So the first thing to look at here then is the M.2 NVMe SSD. And as we can see quite clearly, this is a one terabyte version. Now there's other stuff in the box as well, but this is just a guide on how to put things together this isn't really like an unboxing or anything like that so I'll just move on now looking at the contents of the box for the Saberant enclosure we have got three components here and the first of these three components is this little tiny piece of plastic which is basically a locking nut. Now we don't have to concern ourselves with this due to the size of the M.2 SSD that we're going to use and it doesn't need this. And then the next thing is a short USB-C to USB-C cable here, which is obviously self-explanatory. This is to connect the enclosure to whatever computer you want to connect it to. And then finally we get to the enclosure and I actually really like this. I think this is very well made and this whole toolless design design really works very well with this type of enclosure. Now what it is, the sides here, and then also the top. This is all one piece of alloy. So basically that is going to be the heat dissipation or part of the heat sink unit. Underneath is only plastic, but that doesn't really matter, I don't think, for something like this because most of the heat is going to be absorbed by the actual top part here. Now on one end, as we can see, we have got the USB-C interface. And as we can see underneath it, that little logo there has got a 10 on it. Now that basically is just telling us that this is a 10 gigabit connection. Then next to that is the indicator for activity for the drive. And then the other end here has got a little button on it. And this is just the height of simplicity because all you do, you just push the button in and it releases the top plate. And then you just open it up like that. I mean, it is so simple. It is really, really cool. Now putting the SSD in couldn't be any easier. All we do, we just get the end here that's got the pins on, on the SSD, line it up with the socket that's inside here, inside the enclosure. And then we just kind of push it in, just do it gently until it touches the back. It won't go in after a certain point. And then once it's in, you'll see there, it'll hold itself in place like that. Now all we do, we just push the drive down inside like that. And then as we can see here, there's a little catch so it's like a lever and then we just turn it around like that and then that literally just catches the end of the drive and locks it into place. Now at this point as well, we have got our heat pad here as well. So what we do, we just strip the little layer off the top there. As we can see, it'll expose the pad underneath. Now I'm not gonna take this all the way off and that's only because I'm going to be trying other drives in this particular case. But what you do, you just pull all that off and then what happens is when you close it over, that heat pad will then just make a direct connection to the SSD itself. Then what's gonna happen, once that starts running any high temperatures, that heat pad there is going to help to transfer all the heat generated from the SSD to the alloy case here. Now, all we then do is just literally close it over and then lock it into place. We should be able to hear this click as well. 
there we go and then that literally is the drive all sorted and then all we have to do is to take one end of the USB-C cable connect it to the enclosure there on its USB socket and then just plug the other end of the USB-C cable into the computer now obviously in this instance I'm using my Mac so I'm gonna do that and now I'm gonna get on and do some formatting and some speed tests okay so I've now plugged the drive into my computer and as we can see here I'm obviously on a Mac however this drive will work with Windows desktops and laptops also Linux desktops and laptops it will also work with Android devices such as smartphones and tablets as well as that it'll go onto most Chromebooks and things like that anything basically that's got a USB-C interface on which obviously means you could use this as well with an iPad Pro or any of the iPads with USB-C you could of course use this drive with a different type of cable on to connect to USB-A devices and stuff like that however for this particular process I'm obviously just using USB-C to USB-C now what I'm going to do here is just to move forward and show people how to deal with this drive once it's in a Mac so the first thing that I'm going to do is to format it now as we can see here I've got untitled on the desktop which is actually the SSD that I've just connected now you may not see untitled or it might not even pop up or anything on the desktop don't worry about that because what we're going to do first of all is to format the drive so what we're going to do here go to the search tool up here and then what we'll do here is type in disk utility and as we can see there it will pop up with disk utility so let's click on that now once we are in disk utility in fact let, let me wait for this to load the drives once we are in disk utility just make sure that you click on this icon up here and make sure that it says show all devices okay now as we can see here it says Sabrent Media so that's the case that it's picked up and it's got untitled as the drive so what we need to do here is just make sure we click on the top level which is the Sabrent Media there and then we come over to arrays now what I'm going to do here is to format this to XFAT sorry just one quick thing actually when it says arrays it means format on the Mac anyways what I'm going to do is format to XFAT and the reason why is because I'm going to be using this drive with a number of other devices including Android Windows and a few other things like Chromebooks and stuff like that so you're always best using XFAT because that's going to be the most compatible file format system to use across multiple devices so what I'm going to do where it says format here I'm going to click on there and then click on XFAT also as far as where it says scheme is concerned here you've got no, normally you would probably use the GUID partition mapping here but I'm just going to use master boot record MBR and the reason why I'm using that is because once again it will give us a little bit more compatibility with other devices which may not understand the GUID properly so nonetheless I'm going for XFAT master boot record now also I might as well call this something sensible <laughs> so let's see I'll call it Abrant, no, I'll call it Sabrant. Uh, let's see, one TB, so for the one terabyte. Okay, so that'll do for me naming and stuff. Now I'm going to erase that. Okay, now that'll happen really quick. Once again on the Mac, although it says erase, it really means format. It does erase, but it is also formatting. Anyway, so that's done there. Now, if we come back to the desktop, as we can see, there's the drive there and it's got its new name on and stuff and it is all formatted to XFAT. Now what I'm going to do is a quick speed test here. So what I will do, I will use the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. Now the reason why I'm using this is because my main like use for these types of drives is to store files which are kind of like quite large so we say so things like video picture audio files and stuff like that so this is actually a good utility for testing for things like that so what I'm going to do here is select target drive and then let me come over to my drive list here and I will select the Sabrent let me open that and I'll start that okay so as we can see there the initial uh, right past there is saying 877 megabytes which is pretty decent and the read there is 885 now I'm gonna let that just run through a few times just so we can kind of see how it is averaging out and stuff now like I've just said 
my main use for the drive like this is going to be for like fairly large files. I want to say large files, they only have to be over like a few megabytes in size to be considered as a large file as far as like SSDs and hard drives are concerned. Now the reason why I'm making that distinction is because if you use any SSD drive and say for instance you're transferring say tens of thousands of tiny files, say certain things like I don't know, like a web archive from a server or something like that, the actual drive will slow right down and go extremely slow and that's going to happen for like virtually every SSD that you can probably get your hands on. It's just a symptom of the way that these things work when you're using like tons and tons of very, very small files. However, and like I've already said, my main concern here is for storing video pictures, you know, things like that and maybe a few other things, documents and stuff like that, which are probably going to be like fairly large as far as size is concerned same for an SSD. Anyways, as we can see here, we are consistently getting over 550 megabytes for both the write and the read. Now, I think that this is really good. And the reason why I say that is because at the moment we're connecting via USB-C at 10 gigabits per second. And that USB-C connection is going to have an overhead to it as well as far as the system is concerned. So you're never going to get a true 10 gigabits kind of data transfer backwards or forwards over USB-C anyway. Now, is the thing we could spend more money on a different drive which is technically a lot faster however what you have to remember is this drive is actually way faster than what USB-C is capable of anyway so what we're seeing here is taking account of like the things like overhead for the USB-C bus and stuff like that so we could spend a lot more money on another SSD drive to put in a case like this however we might see a, a small increase of maybe 50 to 100 megabytes difference per second something like that but that's where you've got to say to yourself well hold on a minute do I really want to spend a lot more money for very little performance increase and that's the reason why I'm saying that this particular drive is actually really good value for money because it's going to get us somewhere in the region of what we should be expecting for USB-C with one of these typical kind of like external storage cases and stuff like that anyways that should do it for this video now there will be links in the video description below to taking you to Amazon to where you can get some of the stuff that I've used in the video. Also, if you found the video helpful in any way, please give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing to my channel and getting all over that bell notification icon to be notified of similar videos in the future. And the last thing that remains for me to say right now is, I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.